Silent Hill 2. It's a lobe in my brain right next to my twisted metal lobe. It's a major influence on me and my work as a writer and a filmmaker. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about why the Silent Hill games should have been like Silent Hill 2. Needless to say, it's always broken my heart that Silent Hill didn't survive the let's make all our games appeal to the Western markets era of game development in Japan. This was that sad time in video games when Capcom put out DMC Devil May Cry and Bionic Commando, that game where the dude's wife was his arm. And Konami put out those Lords of Shadow Castlevania games and a bunch of crappy Silent Hill games. Just the worst, most deplorable games in the whole damn series. It was Homecoming that truly broke my heart. Well, really, it ripped it my heart out of my chest and took a big bite out of it and screamed Silent Hill is dead. I never really consider the post team Silent Hill games to be true Silent Hill games. They had been made mostly by people who understood Silent Hill predominantly from a marketing perspective. Ooh, Silent Hill, it's spooky, it's got fog and monsters, it's psychological and dark, and it's got pyramid head, etc, etc. Those games, they just don't stack up. And to this day, Silent Hill 2 remains the zenith of the series. And that's sad. Silent Hill 2 had been an incredibly unique game in a world of killing aliens and rescuing princesses. It defined what Silent Hill is, and pushed games towards that lofty category called art. Sadly, none of the games following Silent Hill 2 could ever capture its essence ever again, and it hurt the series. All the games that came after Silent Hill 2 reverted back to the evil cult plotline, casting out the rewritten lore and mythology Silent Hill 2 brought to the table, and instead going back to the idea that it was the cult and it's God that brought about the supernatural elements of the story. This unfortunately brings the cult and its machinations to the forefront, which limits the possibilities for unique and more interesting storylines. I mean, sooner or later you're gonna run the cult thing into the ground. I mean, how many times can you make a sequel where an evil cult tries to resurrect their god? Whereas Silent Hill 2 made the origin of the reality warping power the town itself, placing the town, its history and locations at the center of the story, and the cult as merely one aspect of the setting. This one simple change opens up a million possibilities for potential storylines. Not only that, but having the town be the source of the power would also allow for more unique other worlds, more specifically representing other character psyches, rather than the same old blood rust, chain link fences, and blood stained stuff we see in every Silent Hill game outside of Silent Hill 2. As opposed to the general dilapidation and muted colors of James's other world in the game. If you would like to hear more about how Silent Hill 2 changed the mythology of the series, check out this link up in the right hand corner of the screen, or check out the link in the description. The only aspect of Silent Hill 2 that carried over to the other games, mostly the post-team Silent games, had been the protagonist with repressed memories surrounding a post-traumatic event, or a past-traumatic event. Am I mixing up my terms? I apologize. These two aspects, the cult and the repressed memories, along with bad game design, and general incompetence really murdered the series. Silent Hill 3 through Book of Memories all should have been modeled more after Silent Hill 2, particularly those post-team Silent Silent Hill games. The story should have been uniquely specific to the characters involved in the story. This would have led to a more unique Silent Hill and its other worlds based specifically on those characters' repressed desires and emotions. And yes, I say repressed desires and emotions, not repressed memories. In Silent Hill 2, desires and emotions James represses had been what warped the town to suit his psyche. It's why all the nurses had been sexy and Pyramid Head and Maria existed, as well as giving the other world its dreary aesthetic, which had been unique entirely to James. The fact that James had been repressing the memory of killing his wife had only existed to allow for an interesting answer to the question that drove the story in Silent Hill 2. If you'd like to learn more about the driving question in Silent Hill 2, you can click the link in the upper right hand corner or the link in the description. The stories following Silent Hill 2 should have placed the town of Silent Hill itself as the main character, expanding more on the history of the town and the events that had went on there, as well as the powers surrounding Silent Hill. This would also allow for the player to explore interesting and historically unique places to the town of Silent Hill, as opposed to the generic apartment buildings and subways of Silent Hill 3 and 4. Additionally, these locations could tie in thematically with the story as the prison and Brookhaven Hospital did in Silent Hill 
Silent Hill 2. This would also allow the player to learn about the history of the town from various sources. It's really fun in Silent Hill 2 to learn about the Little Baroness and Silent Hill 2's Blood Swamp. It's this type of thing that makes Silent Hill stand out as a real three-dimensional place and creates a setting for more unique and interesting stories. There are also many things story-wise that could be done if the town was the main focal point instead of the cult. You could have characters shift between the fog world and the other world and the everyday world where people live and work. You could have stories take place in different points in time, different locations in town, or just one location. Like, oh, I don't know, let's say a hallway that repeatedly loops. And none of the characters would need to have repressed memories. Instead of repressed memories, in the other Silent Hill games, they should have had repressed emotions and desires. Say, if a character had deep resentment in them, they could have an other world of smoke and fire or smoldering embers to represent this. Or if a character represses a lot of anger that could be represented as bombastic and destructive enemies, you could have stories take place all over Silent Hill or just take place in one of the many historical locations around the town. One of the major criticisms of the Silent Hill games to come after Silent Hill 2 had been over its gameplay, specifically its combat. Gameplay evolved little and the games after Silent Hill 2, particularly the post-team Silent games, would try to innovate and evolve to fix the problem. In the case of Shattered Memories, the developer took the combat out altogether. However, all these attempts at correcting the problem really only made things worse. The Silent Hill games tried very hard to lean into the action aspect of the series, not realizing that the games really needed to lean more into the adventure elements of survival horror, the way that Silent Hill 2 did. The developers should have focused on innovating in terms of story, exploration, and puzzle solving. Silent Hill is an interesting location, and being able to explore it fully and find all the nooks and crannies of the location, possibly in the real world, not just the foggy and other world Silent Hills, would be freaking awesome and amazing and would be a great way to elaborate on the town's powers. As the player, you could learn more about the history of Silent Hill by finding statues and historical landmarks. You could go to the library for history or read newspapers about the goings on in Silent Hill or meet people in town. And then, when you inevitably shift to the foggy or other world Silent Hill, you could learn more about those things on a more sinister level. I liked how in Silent Hill 1, you could go to Annie's Bar or the Indian Runner and read the journals of those business proprietors. It really gave the town personality. Silent Hill 2 also did this, giving you lots of information about Silent Hill through landmarks, newspapers, magazine articles, and a fairly good amount of notes left by a wide variety of unseen people, which gave the town and the locations you were in some real personality, like there was actually life there or something. None of the games after Silent Hill did this, or did it as well or as fully as Silent Hill 2. Silent Hill 4 had some great ideas for locations, such as an orphanage where children were brainwashed into believing the cult's rhetoric, and a prison where they were housed and tortured. Although these locations were interesting ideas, they weren't executed well. Silent Hill 4 did, however, provide a lot of characters, both seen and unseen, that affected the environment and story. Silent Hill 2 had some good exploration in unique places that were wholly Silent Hill. The other games should have leaned into this more. The other gameplay aspect that the games post Silent Hill 2 should have done or improved upon or just plainly emphasized was the puzzles. Silent Hill 2 had some of the best puzzles in any game anywhere. Some puzzles were riddles written as poems that the player would have to decipher to complete the puzzle. Others were compelling logic puzzles. Others were symbolically compelling, while others, like the Gallows Puzzle and the Hangman Puzzle, were thematically tied to the story. There has been no Silent Hill game to do it as well as Silent Hill 2. The games that came after Silent Hill 2 would touch on a few of these aspects here and there, but most would fall apart in the execution. Many of the games would move more in an action direction and trying to be more of a traditional sequel, putting the emphasis on the cult in terms of story, instead of the town and screwing up the lore of the series. This reliance on already used plot points hurt the series and made the storylines more conventional, slowly moving the Silent Hill games away from the artistically and emotionally rich Silent Hill 2 and more towards your average horror game. And then, after Team Silent went away, it moved them more towards your below average video game. I miss Silent Hill. Team Silent made some really good and memorable games. And after they were disbanded, Western developers made poor imitations 
Titans. However, no Silent Hill that came after 2 ever lived up to the quality of 2. Nor did they try to expand on what that game did in terms of story, puzzles, exploration, or artistic techniques. Instead, they went back to the more conventional game designs and expected plot elements. It's sad, and I hope one day Team Silent come back together and we get a true Silent Hill game. I guess that is all I have to say about that. Well, if you've enjoyed this video, please check out my uh, documentary and review on the first Silent Hill game. Or check out Halloween Havoc 2020 in this awesome playlist. Adios, and have a good one.